Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a big brindle spot on a pit bull mask. <laughs> it's the lazy way to paint brindle because you could spend hours painting every single hair, which I obviously didn't do, but I still think it came out really cool. And I'm going to put it on right now. As a matter of fact, I want to show you what he looks like. <laughs> real fondness for this particular one because I grew up with bully dogs. Uh, my, gosh, I was probably eight years old when my grandfather brought home a really little puppy. He must, he was just teensy little puppy and the dog pound where he got it told him that it was um, half Boston Bulldog, which turned out to probably not be entirely true because <laughs> he kept getting bigger and bigger. When I was still really little, I would sit out on the on the back porch when I was pretty sure my parents weren't going to see me and I would let him lick my ice cream cone. <laughs> and when I was in college, he finally passed on and my mom got an English Staffordshire to replace him that looks very much like this one, as, as a matter of fact. And, and that was just the sweetest dog. I've got a photograph of my daughter and her cousin, both the same age. I think they were around eight years old at the time. They were squished into a big chair at my parents' house with that big Staffordshire squished in <laughs> right in between them because he couldn't bear to be away from those kids. He was just the sweetest dog. It was just wonderful. So I don't have the same feeling about pit bulls that a lot of people do. I think they're, they can be just really sweet, lovable family dogs if you get the right one. In fact, that's why he got that uh, brindle spot because that was Tolka, the big Staffordshire, had one of those. This is a pattern, of course, and if you would like to make a pit bull mask of your own, you can find the pattern at ultimatepapermache.com slash pitbull mask. Now let's get started. I'm going to show you how I put that brindle spot on there. After I taped all the pieces of the mask together, I covered the cereal box cardboard pieces with one layer of torn newspaper, and I used cooked flour and water paste. I have a video with some tips about how to make the paper mache look really nice and smooth. I'm going to put a link to it down below. I used a flat sculpting knife this time to smooth the paper mache over the nose. I just wanted to make that nice and smooth because, you know, it's a nose and it worked really good. Then I let it dry completely before I added a layer of gesso. Now, I have to admit that you've probably seen me do this. I often use latex primer or even spray primer instead of gesso. But that's mostly because <laughs> the cheaper brands of gesso that I've used before just didn't seem to cover the newsprint very well. The brand that I bought this month, uh, I, I just happened to find it because it has had a, a smaller bottle <laughs> on Amazon and that, that's pretty much why I picked it out. But I really like it a lot better than the kinds I've used before. When that was all dry, I used a pencil to find the edges of the big spot I wanted uh, over one of his eyes. And I just kind of drew it on arbitrarily. Uh, the photo that I'm using as a model had spots over both eyes, so I'm, I'm really just kind of making it up. I did want it to go over the ear just because just I thought that would be kind of fun. Then I mixed up a warm white. Just, it's just white with a tiny dab of yellow ochre in it, and I wanted to use that as an undercoat for everything except for the brindle spot and the nose, of course. The warm white that I put on is going to be covered up later with plain old white, but I really like layering colors, and I, I do think it makes it a little bit more interesting if you happen to be looking at it really, really close, but mostly it doesn't matter. <laughs> I just like doing it. Then I mixed up a, well, I'm not sure what we're going to call this, um, Let's say yellow brown. I that's about as close as I can get. It's the undercoat fur on the brindle area. The dog in the photo that I'm using as a model has a really light colored undercoat, but some brindle pit bulls have a much darker, like reddish brown undercoat under the black uh, fur, and some of them have spots that are almost all dark gray. So it really depends on on which colors you want to use and which dogs you're using for a model. I was able to match the photograph pretty pretty close with raw sienna and white plus a, a very small spot of black added to it. I, I can't really explain why that helped because I'm, I'm not a colorist but when it was just the uh, raw sienna and the white 
it was it was too bright too it was too colorful it needed to be grayed down a little bit and the black really helped I also used a darker version of that and my wispy brush just to make some a, a, a couple of areas that had a little bit of, of dark, darker uh, yellow brown but in the end it got totally covered up and so um, it disappeared entirely from the the actual finished piece now when the yellow brown was drying I painted the nose black and I added some dry brushed dark fur around the nose and on his chin I think I could have spent a little bit more time on that <laughs> but I mean it looks okay but I, I wouldn't mind going back and, and doing a little bit more work on that part when the yellow brown color on his spot was all dry I found my medium sized grainer brush the, the folks who sold it to me on Amazon calls it a, a Wisp Filbert brush. It's really kind of fun. I mean, you don't need one. <laughs> I could have done this with, with just a plain old ordinary small brush, but I kind of like playing with the Wispy brush instead. I started adding the black fur over the brindle spot and uh, with a lot of it right around the eye because that in, in, in the photograph that I'm using as my model, that's, that's the darkest part of the brindle spot. I, I actually looked up a whole bunch of stuff about brindle uh, color patterns for, for dogs online and it looks like a lot of people think that the pattern on, on brindle is a lot like a cat's stripes it, but it doesn't look like that to me. And some people even think that it's kind of like a calico cat's color pattern but I can't see that either. But if you look really close, especially <laughs> in the photograph that I happen to be using for my model, there were black stripes. They weren't organized the way you see them on a cat, though. They were just almost like random. And so that meant I could put mine on randomly, too. I didn't have to be exactly uh, matching the, the photograph and, and still have it look okay. I did start just kind of randomly putting, uh, just very lightly uh, covering all of the brindle area with very widely spaced uh, fur with the black and then I went back over it and kind of organized it into stripes if that makes any sense at all and then after the black was all dry I did go back over it with just a little bit more of the of the yellow brown but just a little bit brighter just to just to give it just a little bit more interest so that it isn't just isn't just two colors with the the yellow and the black there's there's a little bit more going on in there but not much it, it didn't take very long and then I did go back over that warm white with a pure white and I but I left some of the the warm white showing through um, I really like it but you have to get awfully close to, <laughs> to see that it isn't all white So now the Pitbull mask is all done, and if you would like to make one of your own, you can use my pattern. It's at ultimatepapermache.com slash pitbull mask. If you do make one, please come back to my website and post photographs of it on the Daily Sculptors page. I would really love to see how they come out. So do come back to my website and show yours off. And in the meantime, go make something <laughs> and come back and visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.